Hi, this is Kim, the making of a master believer. In our life as we grow as adults, many of us perfect and should be perfecting our craft, our education, our skills with our jobs. For example, there are master craftsmen. There are those that have master's degree in a particular subject. We are to be growing, and very few of us, as we mature in age, would find pride if we stayed in the exact same place that we started years ago at our very first job. Most of us would expect that we have moved up. Or we would expect that of our children, that they still would not be sweeping the floors or just cleaning the barn or just studying a certain topic in school at college and they just stayed in that same place. The same with the skill of construction. You can't say to someone, well, I'm so proud of you that after 30 years or after 20 years, you're still just holding the measuring tape. What is it in the walk of Christ, with Christ as Christians, that many have not become masters in the walk? We are warned over and over in the Word about maturing and growing in the walk. Somewhere in this journey, there's become this passive perspective and the sit in the rocking chair feeling and just rocking through and listening to the feel-good messages, feeling a little bit of motivation to be kind. But there are very few masters of the Christian walk. There are very few that can be called a master believer. And, and no, this is not pride. This is not arrogance. This is maturity. I was reading earlier today, and this is what prompted me to give this message. In 2 Peter, I call it a math equation. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter is talking about the maturing and becoming a master. He doesn't use those exact words, but this is what I saw in this passage. For this very reason, make effort to add to your faith goodness. So see, you can become a believer. A believer is faith. You're believing in something. So you can have some faith. And you can become a good person. But then it goes further. Add to your faith goodness. And to goodness, knowledge. So when you begin to be a believer, at whatever age in life you became a believer, you had some faith. And you became a better person. You had some goodness. Well, after goodness, you need to get in the Word. And you need to have knowledge. But after knowledge, add to your faith goodness, and to your goodness knowledge, and to your knowledge self-control. So there are those, and many of you listening know there are people that are filled with knowledge but have no self-control. The Word even says that if you, cannot, if you are a believer and you cannot tame your tongue, it is useless, your walk and your message is useless. So let's back up. Add to your faith goodness. Okay, you've done some good things. You started to become a good person. And then you started to get in the Word of God and you had some knowledge. But then it becomes application. You have to have self-control. You have to make the choice of self and control it. Tame the tongue. Tame your actions. Tame yourself when tempted. Self-control. Oh, but it goes further. Add to your faith goodness. To your goodness, 
knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance. Because you might have some self-control, but then it happens again, or you're tempted again, or that person attacks you again, and you give up, and you're saying, this isn't fair. I already, I already was patient, and they're just mean to me. Oh, I tried, but nothing ever changed. Oh, you didn't think about self-control having to persevere with self-control, with knowledge, with goodness, with faith. Oh, it goes further. Add to your faith goodness, and to your goodness, knowledge, and to your knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance. And what happens when you begin to become a master? To perseverance, godliness arrives. And when you persevere with self-control, with knowledge, with goodness, with faith, brotherly love, Oh, we have to really love other people with our knowledge, with our perseverance, with our self-control, with our goodness, with our faith. And to godliness and to brotherly kindness, love. This is the math equation for a master believer. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness, knowledge. Get in the Word of God and learn it. Oh, but then you have to have self-control. You have to apply the Word of God that you know. And then you have to endure with perseverance and continue to keep self-control and continue to keep self-control and continue and continue and to continue to apply the knowledge of self-control of what you know and you have to continue to persevere and when you persevere then it's godliness and then when you've learned godliness it is brotherly kindness. And when you have that, you add to it love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed of his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make the calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. James tells us in his letter, Show me your faith without deeds. I'll show you my faith by what I do. That's exactly what Peter was saying. It's not just faith. You have to add to your faith. And James says in chapter 3, well, actually, there's two or three passages here. And he says, Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. You see that a person is justified by what he does, and not by faith alone. Hebrews 5 talks about getting off the milk. In fact, those of you by this time, you ought to be teachers. Have you become a master in your trade? In 
your area of work, in your area of study, but yet you're sitting back and you're still on the milk of the Word of God? You're not applying it? You're just sitting in the rocking chair and you're taking sips and spoon-fed of food? Week after week? Oh, you have faith. Oh, not really. Because you're not showing your faith by what you're doing. In fact, those of you by this time ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word over and over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, be, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the, mass, the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. It's interesting because this passage is Hebrews 5.12, and now I'm going to take you to Hebrews 12.5. I'm just going to back up to the beginning of the chapter before I close. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cl cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and entangles and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. There's the word perseverance. Let us run. It doesn't say walk. It doesn't say limp. It said run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, one who for the joy set before him endured the cross. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the words of encouragement that addresses you as sons. And this is King David in the Psalms. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. And Paul goes on, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone goes, undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while, as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Make level paths before you, before your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and be holy, for without holiness, no one will see God. And what is holiness? What is godliness? What is goodness? Make every effort to add to your faith goodness. And to goodness, knowledge. Oh, and to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. And what was in the other passage? that we are to persevere and run the race and be disciplined by, by our Father who is training us to be strong and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance, godliness arrives. And with godliness arriving, then it becomes brotherly love. I'm sorry, brotherly kindness. And with brotherly kindness, add to it love. Get off the milk, get on the meat, 
Become a master. Get a master's degree in Christianity. It's not a piece of paper. It's the maturing of your behavior. James said, show me your faith without deeds. I'll show you my faith by what I do. God bless you.